No, there actually is, but there's nothing that. Is this the um, 1057 yeah. Grand Street in Kent? Yeah. What are you looking at? The vacant lot. Oh. Uh, 1057 Grand Street in Kent, there used to be a house there, and generally what happens, protocol is, when someone receives their uh, recycling invoice or whatever, they'll call in to the building department and say, hey, that house is no longer there. Well, we've had <coughs> houses just, you know, torn down, fire, and then removed, whatever. So generally, I'm the one who goes out and takes the picture to verify. And I did that, and I verified that the house is no longer there because it went from 1055 down to, I think, 1053. So, uh, and I always take pictures, and that way we've got documentation that it's not there. Not there. So. Uh, Looks like it hasn't been there for a while. Yeah, and I mean, that's the thing. That, you know, it's not like I saw dirt with, you know, I mean, bare dirt where grass looked like it started to grow and mm -hmm. it had just been demolished. So. Well, I'd like to, you know, add that to the second or as a journal entry that we're no longer going to build them uh, for that property. Okay, so I'll go ahead. Are they looking for any credits or anything? Not that I'm aware of. Okay, so I'll go ahead and make a motion to pass a journal entry to remove the property at 1057 Grand Street, Kent, from service and billing from the solid waste district of recycling. Second. Roll call, Julie. Kathleen. Yes. Sabrina. Yes. Thank you. Yes. All right. Thank you. Item D is um, I talked to Janet and other departments such as water resources um, to also um, use uh, JFS mm -hmm. for background checks. Uh, this was something that I had talked about years ago in a leadership meeting because. Uh, I realize that our capability in HRs is so, you know, limited. It goes to a point, um, but uh, I would like the board to know that you know this. The MOU you have in front of us was the original one that was drafted up by Denise Smith, but it's something that uh, we would like to enter into uh, with the with uh, JFS, um, and I'm not sure which way we're going to go. Whether we're going to go BCI or FBI, but um, you know, for me, more information is better, uh, just because of the nature of the market, and um, you know, it's pretty tough to when you have somebody that moves in from out of state in, uh, they may not have anything, you know, like if we, if we were to check the Portage County Court view, it's Portage County, it doesn't, right. it's not all encompassing, so. Um, I just don't want to get a surprise if we don't do the due diligence further down the road. Not that I anticipate it, but it's just something that I think we should make part of our hiring process. Okay. I agree. All right. Then I will bring this back next week um, in uh, resolution form. Thank you. Okay. Citizens Work Group. Um, oh, I, yeah. just, I just gave you some, it's a draft of what I've been putting together, uh, I, I just, all I'm asking for is feedback from the board. I'd like to bring this back next week because while you're in recess, I, you know, I'd like to try to get this thing almost as finalized as possible so we can start moving forward with it. It's just, I'm not, I do not know how you want to do this, whether you, you want to appoint the, the members, do you want Don and myself to interview them? Or, or what do you want to do? All, all I want to do is follow the established protocol that you have for well, you any know, kind of group. I, and I have a note on that, on the application process. We actually have an application Great. Great. that we have, and maybe Julie, yep. you can get that for Bill, um, for board appointments and stuff. Yeah, that would and be And they perfect. would fill that out. Yep. I mean, if they want to send a letter, but normally the, the application. No, that's fine, yeah. Yeah, if, if that just saves me paperwork time and trouble, I'm, I'm all for it. I thought we weren't doing that formal of a process for this. You know, I really can't say if I remember. I'm, I'm going to claim old age here. Well, we talked about calling it a, a citizens work group. Yeah, yeah, yeah our study right, right. committee or yeah. something so that you wouldn't be so rigid. 
Yeah, yeah. And, and bound by our appointment okay. process and mm -hmm. uh, okay. all the other things that come along with it, an established okay. statutory board. Right, right. So they're more like volunteers well, versus, they are volunteers. Yeah, so, versus yeah. so um, would you like us to just an run actual. an ad, like a, an ad? We seeking people, uh, you know, people that are interested, or, or how do you think we should do? This? I thought you had a lady that was going to sort of she was, this. yeah. So I can I can appoint her, or I can ask her just to go ahead and spearhead <coughs> this and run with it. Right. Get us the appointment. Yeah. The people that want to okay. serve on it. That's fine. That's that worked great for me. And all I would do is suggest that maybe she not get all five members from the same right. area you know yeah. I try to diversify yeah yeah we've talked about groups. that I'd like a cross-section of the county you mm -hmm. know people with the various levels of service uh, and, and I agree you know I, I'm gonna ask her not to have you know I, I want to keep it small five people That's fine. and try to make sure well I'm just gonna tell her that there cannot be unless no one else wants to serve on this committee or this work group Two people from the same municipality. Oh, yeah. You know, I want to try to just you know cover the whole county. Is what I want to do. Yeah. And you know, Bill, we when we met with Brimhill the other day, one of the things that was brought up is was not only educating people about recycling, but repurposing, reusing, right. because we have such an abundance of recycling now. Mm -hmm. yep. um, so maybe those are some things. That yeah, I did jot that down on on issues or items I would like to yeah. have this work group look at. Um, so yeah, I, I did get that down because I, I made that note myself yeah. that you know okay. we need to, uh, because probably heading into March, we're, I, I want to try to get this thing moving along because that's going to be, uh, spring is traditionally when people, you know, they, they, they inside all winter, they want to get outside. We see an uptick in material collected there because people suddenly decide to clean out the garage or whatever. Yeah. The drop off see an uptick in, in material as well. So that's when we really want to start getting that information out. So good, thank you. Item F. Um, generally, every year I do a grant uh, from the EPA, and I've kicked around several ideas of what I can apply for. And the one that I'm kind of honing in on is a grant for scrap tires. I'm working on, and I should bring that next week, uh, a scrap tire report. And basically, uh, years ago, our cost for just strictly processing per ton was $54 a ton. Uh, at that time, we collected 328 tons of tires. Wow. Uh, that has wow. since dropped to 205 last year, but has also increased to over $200 a ton for processing, and that does not include uh, our time for the drivers, the fuel, the maintenance, uh, because these are held on Saturday. They're up. It's, it's uh, overtime for the drivers. Now, we can be awarded up to $40,000, but the, the kicker for this is, or the caveat, <coughs> is that the EPA understands that there is a need throughout the state for scrap tires. That's all they're hearing is, you know, scrap tires, scrap tires. Tires, but I can honestly say that in the years I've done these, it's a great program, it works well. But I also have a suspicion that people will save their tires for our events because they get out of paying that two or three dollar fee when they well, buy the tires. tires. Right. So, this, this grant requires the collection of a minimum of 50 cents per tire. Now, the problem comes in the that collection of it. Well, the problem comes in that, that there are weekends where we have five collection events. And since it's our grant, I'm the one who would be responsible for the collection of that money. Mm -hmm. So while $40,000 would be a boon for us, uh, considering you know, what we're going through, I think what I'm going to do is, my suggestion is, this year because we saw a tremendous increase in the number of tires with rims and each one of those tires now cost us $5.62 uh, semi tires and tractor tires 
So what, I, what I'm proposing is this grant would really not start until 2021 because of the state's cycle. It starts, their fiscal year starts July 1st and ends June 30th. So this would be more for the 2021 collection. We do the same and similar what we've been doing in the past, but uh, we have to have some kind of an understanding or agreement with the entities out there uh, that, you know, we have to be real strict on what we're taking because it's it's just literally breaking a back. Um, I thought I had included a picture in your packet. Of the, oh, yeah. Yeah, and, and that's, that's what I want to avoid because that is not what this program is meant for. Um, you know, we're always, we've always been willing to help out um, a community that has all of a sudden had tires pop up, uh, but that is not what this is about. And I'm just glad that I happened, that happened at the Ravenna Township coming up, and that happened when I first stopped that day. And I'm glad I caught that because um, <clears throat> the road superintendent's a wonderful guy. I've known him for years, and he was totally unaware of what our limits so this were. is one guy bringing that's one all guy that yeah to, now where did he get all those tires you know i'm not sure i would have to say there's a whole host of possibilities it could have been a tire shop it could have been somebody that was collecting them because when i asked him i said where'd these come from he said around and i said that's not the answer i'm looking for but i took that picture and then gave it to Alex, and Alex ran the plate on the trailer mm -hmm. and met with the gentleman and explained to him. And not only that, but unless he's a licensed tire hauler, that's illegal, because in the state of Ohio, you're only allowed to transport 10 tires if you're an unlicensed hauler. So what I'm thinking about is we do the same and similar this, this next round, but we let all the entities know that we're gonna have to make some changes. And then the following year, if we're successful with this grant, we may have to reduce the number of events to four, one in each quadrant, because since we're responsible for collecting this money, uh, I don't want to get it too far out. And that was one of the reasons why I attended the Mahoney County Collection event over at the Canfield Fair. Um, you know, they, they pick a location where they can get people off the road. Uh, I was real impressed how they set it up. Uh, they. They just did it. They did not get a grant, but they collected about sixteen, seventeen hundred dollars uh, to offset, and and that's just one of the requirements the EPA has for these tires because they don't want people to use these as the once a year free get rid of your tires that you've collected for the year. That's not what these. That's not what even our program is geared towards. Uh, it's you know it's to help out people, but yet not let people screw the system from paying that state fee. You know, Bill, you would think that since we have these every year, and if the true purpose is followed, you'd have less and less exactly. Numbers, right? Yeah, and you'll see when I do when I chart I, I did a, a table, and again we started out with well over 300 tons, and it dropped, and then it picked up, and then it dropped again, and. Um, I, I think part of it too is when, when if we decide to do these quadrants, uh, I, I will have some of our team there to make people aware that there are options during the year, uh, and uh, you know, especially for somebody who comes with a full trailer full, that you know, here's a copy of the Ohio Revised Code. Uh, you know, if there's a patrolman out there or whatever who's on their game, you can get ticketed, mm -hmm. um, and. You know, that's not what this is for. So know. did you turn this guy away? Oh yes, most certainly. What I did was I told him, I said, you know, we'll take 10 of those tires, which he took out of the yeah. bed of the truck. And I said, I'm sorry. And I told Ray, I said, he can't come back. This is not what this is for. They're <laughs> not regular tires either. What Some of them were passenger you? tires. Um, you know, I, I just, took, okay. yeah, okay. I, I kind of had to walk away so I could get, because I could not get a clear picture of the rear plate on the truck, but mm -hmm. I knew if I could pull the plate off the back of the trailer, then we could run it. Wow. Okay. So, you know, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and apply for this grant, tire grant. Mm -hmm. um, you said it's about 40,000? A week and ask for up to 40,000, and that's what I'm going to ask. But okay. I have found when I apply for the EPA, uh, sweeten the pot a little bit. So as I've started writing the grant, um, they're asking for 50 cents. I, I'm going to charge just a dollar for a passenger tire, uh, a little bit more for a semi-tire and a tractor tire. 
uh, because uh, Liberty, or Liberty Tire now in Minerva is pretty much our last resort for taking these tires and uh, Lightner uh, over in Akron. It, it's a labor issue with them and, and these, these facilities are restricted how long these tires can be on the ground and they get frequent visits from the EPA and in the case of Akron, the health department because if they're laying on the ground, they get water in them, then you have a mosquito and a health oh, issue. Yeah. And, I, and I understand, That's and I can appreciate that. And when the, the last time I talked to uh, Lightner, they just said people would come in and work for a day or two that never show up. So, and when you consider we collect, you know, over 200 tons in about an eight week period, that's a large volume. Mm -hmm. And so the other, the other portion of this is if we go to quadrants, we can segregate the tires with rims, the tires without rims, the semi tires, the tractor tires, because then we also get charged for them to separate them, but it's just part of the system. You know? Oh, you, you don't make them separate? No, because if, if, if we drop off two containers at a community, they're just taking everyone's tires. Gotcha. You, you know, and so that makes it a little bit different. And we don't want to bring them back and separate through them ourselves because we just don't have the manpower. So um, again, that's why I went to Mahoning County to see how Lou Vega did it. And literally they had, they had everything segregated, which helped to reduce their cost processing so okay. I, I will go ahead and forge with that I will probably well I'll come back in January when I have the grant done what I normally do with the resolution and go from there uh, Ritztown Township uh, I attended their meeting on Tuesday night for um, doing an addendum to our contract um, they weren't happy with me uh, because um, you know, I'm asking for a rate increase. We're into the third year of a five-year contract. Um, I'm hoping to try one more time. Uh, at least my feeling is communication is the best way. And when someone's a little upset with me or the system or whatever, I try to give them a week to calm down um, and then hit them again uh, because I should have probably put Brimfield Township first. Um, we, when we met with Brimfield Township, we supply them with the financial information on what it's truly costing them and just so the board knows every time I do something like this that has been my history that generally um, when Audrey Tillis was here and now Todd I say hey could you double check this for me mm -hmm. because they are the financial experts uh, and then when I had Gene above me Gene was also copied uh, because Gene has that unique ability to look at it as a service director and and so those are the two uh, individuals that I go to the most. But I think with Brimfield, um, I feel a little bit better. I think we've made some progress uh, giving them the, uh, the spreadsheet on what it's really costing us to provide, open up their eyes. They're going to meet December 18th at 8 o'clock in the morning to discuss this. I plan on being at that meeting in case there's any questions. Um, some things were bannered about. Uh, we gave them a, a two-year contract uh, every other week service in line with what we're doing throughout the rest of the county so i'm hopeful um, but i'll be back on the 19th to let you know what, you know what they decided and then we have to decide if they turn down the three year or excuse me the two-year contract what we're going to do on january 1st now when we've run into these situations with a couple of entities we've continued to provide service mm -hmm. because ultimately, as I explained at that meeting, I'm not here to penalize the residents. Right. Know, their residents are also our residents. So there's no need for us to have a difference of opinion and penalize the residents. Yeah. That's that's not fair. And, and what's gonna happen is everyone's phones are gonna ring. Mine are gonna ring, yours are gonna ring, theirs are gonna ring, and that's not good either. So, um, I, you know, We'll, we'll cross that bridge when we come to that uh, because, again, uh, I just want to do what's right and then just be, you know, have it fair. That's all. Okay. So I'll bring that, I'll, I'll report back to the board and uh, I'll put together a spreadsheet for Redstown and try to meet with them and say, hey, you know, we're, we're not asking for something that's out of, out of line and everyone else is doing this, but here's what it's costing you see what that will do. So I missed your first sentence. So you said you went into Ritztown in the middle of their their contract and right. proposed a, yeah. a modest increase. Right. Yeah. We, we've done that with other uh, Suffield 
uh, once we explain to them, you know, hey, this is what our, you know, uh, we wouldn't even be in this situation if it wasn't for our processing cost had gone up to ninety-three dollars a ton. So, you know, right now we're we're writing checks twenty-four, twenty-five thousand dollars a month just to cover processing. So that's an extra amount that has really hurt us. Uh, now, though, does their contract? They're one of the first ones. Did it have the opener where we yes. could go back? Yes. Because yeah. for some reason, it, it's been said to me a couple times, why why would we do this when we're under contract for five years? So that's why I'm asking yeah. if uh, theirs was one that did have that in there. 9.2. Okay. Yeah, we generally put that in most of the contracts. Um, just because, you know, anymore you can't predict what's going to happen. I, I remember when diesel fuel went up to $4 a gallon at the pump. Uh, you know, that was a tough one to cover. Uh, then all of a sudden, you know, fuel prices came back down, uh, you know, processing costs. But I can tell you that um, I am working on plan B for processing uh, because, again, I don't like to see the department held captive uh, by one company. So I've been approached about a potential plan B, uh, and I'm working on that. So the next step in this then would have to have mediation? Yeah, but, I, but what I would like to do is I would like to try and avoid that yeah. and simply say, okay, yeah, yeah let's, let's just all take a deep breath here. Here's what it's really costing us, um, and, and just kind of go from there. Because um, to me, um, that's not going to help the situation. That's going to probably aggravate it a little Hope bit. Hope the bear some more. Yeah, but yeah. I and tell you, they, they seem very adamant, though. They're like, yeah, everything. and that's so. fine. And I just don't think that, you know, they read their contract to section 9.2. Yeah. So the last thing I have is online payment. Um, it is on our website, the option for online payment. Don Burgess added that this week. So hopefully. Nice. Uh, that will be done. I did talk to Todd that uh, when we start sending out billing, that information is on there. It's my understanding um, that we cannot do credit cards because we're not considered a utility, whereas water resources can. Uh, I'd have to check with Todd to see if anybody has posed that question to the prosecutor's office. But in, for instance, in the city of Kent, they consider recycling a utility. So, you know, I, I may call the EPA to see if anyone else throughout the state has declared recycling. Is that until because the way they do the billing with, they do it combined <coughs> with, don't well, they do billing with their, is it their garbage or don't they combine it with something now? We do that in Streetsboro. Okay. We, we do that with the uh, sewer bill. Mm -hmm. And then for, there's like the vast majority of the people up there get a sewer bill and then the, the rest just have it on their taxes just because there's yeah. there's no way to to send them a bill like that but that's that's where we're at so i can pay my cat bill online now uh, yeah. I, I would think so but I, right. I, I i'm going to defer to todd how okay <laughs> see i always go through my bank yeah. You're saying you're yeah yeah like i i, I can tell you um i can't yeah. tell you the last time i mailed out a oh. bill uh, because Karen has just fallen in love with online banking. Oh, yes. Our daughter-in-law showed her how to do it, and she's been nothing oh, but yeah. online banking. Say stamps, and yeah, I exactly. put it in right away, and you can pay yeah. two weeks later, whatever. Yeah, I mean, have a record of it all yeah, right there. Yeah, exactly. And it's you know, I, it's been a really good thing for yeah. the Snyder household. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. Okay. Do we have any executive sessions? No. I'll make a motion to adjourn. Celebrate. All right. Have a good day, everybody. Roll call, Julie. Thank you, Bill. You're welcome. Hi, Yes, Sabrina. Yes. Thank you. Yes. Thanks, Bill. You're welcome. Have a good day, everybody. You got it. Am I ready? Oh, Julie. Hi, Yeah, thanks. I don't recognize anything unless it says Amazon Prime on the side.
Maybe it's eight. And you it's a Microsoft one. Oh, you got one. Oh, oh, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Shall I start? Yes. Okay. So the data report is the first thing that I wanted to review with you on um, the September October data report. Um, relevant to public assistance, cash assistance, food assistance, Medicaid, public welfare benefits. Um, the significant changes are really found on page two regarding our net transportation program. Um, we continue. Shame on us for having a lot of innovative programs, but not just with the programs with NET as well, we continue to see an increase in the calls as well as the trips necessary. You know, on that first page, I'm sorry. the mm -hmm. child care, yeah. uh, October is down. Is that a good thing? I mean, we're not, we don't have this. It is a good thing um, because then we're not paying the subsidy for as many children or the government. Okay, it's it? not that children are back in school or anything. No, because okay. October they would have been. So yeah, hopefully okay. it's workforce related that okay. parents are um, not as much in need. But we don't usually watch the trends from month to month. But right. usually we see them. But that would be my assumption. Okay. It's just a, a decrease in the need of child care okay. subsidy. Okay. Um, so transportation, this, um, and we should probably change the title next month, isn't just net transportation, it's transportation overall with JFS, um, because when you see the bottom with our drivers, they're also transporting um, the gentleman from the county jail to Paris with that work release program. Mm -hmm. They're also transporting our CCMEP kids, they're transporting our um, adults in the manufacturing program, so we'll change the title. Um, there is a significant need, and it just kind of as a lead into. We had a um, quarterly directors meeting several months ago where our new director is Kim Hall for Ohio Department of Job and Family Services, and she's had a really profound presence through all the 88 counties and really looking at additional programs and initiatives and funding and all of these things. And so, in dialogue about how do we move, continue to move people from poverty to self-sufficiency, we really started a dialogue with the directors on what does that look like outside of just a benefit. And um, a number of directors, myself included, talked about the barrier of transportation. So about three or four years ago when we initiated the manufacturing um, internship program here, we really did a lot of work to get the private sector at the table with us, the businesses, to hire 